course, I'm Steve Bartall, a spotter of Michael McDowell's number 34 front row uh, motorsports car. Uh, we've been away a couple weeks, uh, had a couple, one really good race, one kind of average race. Uh, get to talk to you about that. And then uh, coming up this week, we're going to New Hampshire, we'll talk a little bit about that. And we'll also talk just a little bit about um, uh, the dirt race tonight. The trucks are racing on dirt. So, Dean, if you go over here to the video, uh, this is us right here, the K-Love car. We're number 34. Um, I don't know if it shows what lap we are in the race. 89 to go of 160, so we've already, we're have already we in the second stage right now. We were running second in the first stage, um, but we got kicked out and had a little bit of front-end problem, got it fixed, and we run really good in this stage. Ended up finishing second in it to Stenhouse. But we're going to play the audio because NBC was nice enough to give us some coverage. And you're actually going to be able to hear the announcers talk about what we're doing. And then you're going to be able to hear me talk to my driver and telling him what we're doing. So as you can see as they're running in these packs, if you're spotting for any one of these cars, you're probably in binoculars trying to guess what's going to happen. They're all running the same speed, so it's a little bit easier. But uh, we'll just play audio here for a couple minutes, let you watch it, and then we'll kind of come back and talk about it. So. Hold on one second. I thought the 78 was the only winner from this year that had a car that could win the race. And here Clint Boyer's proving me wrong, leading with all that damage. I see one guy that might save the night, and that's the six car, Trevor Bain. He's making some moves. He ain't going to sit here and ride. And McDowell. McDowell moves to the outside of Casey King, tries to get that outside line working. And Clint Boyer moves up to block. This is our the car. The racetrack goes McDowell, trying to take the lead away. Got help. He's got great help from Trevor Bain. Trevor is going to move around. He's going to try to make something happen. He started all that back in turn one, or entering turn one, all that began. A whole run was organized there. Michael McDowell leading at Daytona. Remember Mike, Michael McDowell, that car he's driving. Roush Fenway built that car, prepared it. It's got a Roush car behind him. Big block by Trevor there Bain. Back now he's down, trying to get down, the 95 from going underneath him. Could not do it. Casey Kane with a big run. And he blocks the 95. So Michael McDowell stays in front of the momentum. Up to third now, Martin Trex Jr. This is the time now. Four cars on the bottom row with you, you in the 95, 78. How about Harvick? Where did he go Four from? He was right. Four cars on the bottom of the 17, 4 now. Barkdahl, the spotter. Move you up in front of him. Let him push us for a while. Still 95 one back. He's one ahead of the 77 or 17. Bottom still got the run. 95 still with you. Is that outside line? And the 77 stalled out over the 78. Let's listen to him give that information outside, on that outside check line. Check the outside just a little bit. Now back down. Back down. Just need to get a little run. Get ready to move up. Move up, move up, move up, move up. Get that run from him. Get that push from him. Then you go back down once you feel it. Get that outside line on that outside line. Now we're up to the 17 is super strong here. With you now, you're clear. You're clear. Bottom does not have a run. Bottom does not have a run issue in that 17. He's probably going to dive on here. Just watch him. 
is line right now. First four in line. 95 follow back on the bottom. That's it. First five or single here. That's great information from the spotter. So he saw the spotter saw that outside line forming. He let his driver know when to move up, when it was okay to move up and not throw a crazy block. It was a good early move so that outside line could prepare for it. Really smart, smart information. Interesting to see if Stenhouse has got to be as loyal to McDowell as McDowell was to him earlier in the race. Well, I think that's what makes this very difficult is that we know Stenhouse Jr. wants to lead. We've seen how aggressive he is. So running this top opens the door to just turn left and have... Okay, that's probably enough. Uh... Very rarely, when you're a 20th place car, do you get a chance to run up front and lead like this. Uh, although we want to do it every week just like everybody else, uh, there's multiple reasons that it's tough to do. But at Daytona, Talladega, and the road courses, sometimes it's a little bit easier for a driver like Michael to showcase his talents. Um, to get up there, and we had a really strong car, to get to do that, uh, you know, for myself even, I have been fortunate enough to win at Daytona and Talladega with different drivers, but when you don't do it week in, week out, it's something you have to practice and uh, watch these tapes. This is actually the first time I've watched this one, but I want to learn because later in this race we get shuffled to the back and actually with about five to go we end up wrecking and finishing 26 in the race. So, so all that great comment by Dale Jr. and by the guys in the booth it doesn't help anything if you don't get to finish at the end of the day. And uh, so Michael did a great job. Uh, my my part is to not only be his coach, to, to paint the picture. I, I tell people, like I say, that it's an air traffic controller that's painting the picture for him. And we had a meeting this week because right after this race, we went to Kentucky last weekend. And um, we just kind of had an average night. And I wasn't up to par on my game. I kind of made him block some people maybe that he shouldn't have uh, and it got us in some awkward positions. Even though we finished the race and, and almost finished on the lead lap, we just let the leader pass us right at the last lap just so we wouldn't be in his way. Uh, I didn't do my job and so we had a meeting this week talk about it. Hey, what, what can I do to be better for you, Michael? And he kind of told me the things that he wants out of me and I kind of told him the things that I see and so we worked on that and, and uh, looking forward to bringing those going to New Hampshire this week. Uh, we're getting ready to uh, leave for New Hampshire tomorrow, actually. Uh, we got a little video from New Hampshire that we'll go to. It's just the last couple of laps of the race. But, you know, going back to that we've been gone for a couple of weeks. So Daytona, two and a half miles, super fast, super speedway, two weeks ago. Kentucky, mile and a half rough track, uh, which we run most of our races on. But we actually don't run another mile and a half track until the chase starts or the playoffs, as, as they're called now. So that's six, seven races away. This week is a mile flat track. So we go two and a half mile and a half mile. Then we go to Pocono as a two and a half mile trioval, which is totally different than anything we race on. And then after that, Watkins Glen. So we really get a real good mix here over the next five weeks. It puts a lot of stress, a lot of pressure on the teams to prepare good cars uh, for different type of tracks. And uh, our guys do a really good job uh, at Front Row Motorsports. Uh, Jerry Freeze leads them up there. Uh, Derek Finley is a crew chief on the 34. Uh, but they have to work hard because they're all different cars. Everybody wants to know how many cars you have. Well, we got different cars for Daytona and Talladega, and we got cars that run mile and a half tracks, and we got cars that run flat tracks, we got cars that run two and a half mile tracks, and we got cars that run road courses and then short tracks. So if you combine that with the backups, you know, you, you got 15 to 18 cars at least sitting in your stable. And over the next five weeks, with it all the tracks being different, those cars all got to get ready. So we'll show you a couple laps here on uh, New Hampshire, talk a little bit about that, and a little bit about the truck race tonight, and then uh, we'll let you go till next week. So here you go. All right, here we go here. This is just, uh, this will show you, this is a real flat track. This is the last lap of the race. Uh, I don't know if Denny's leading it or Larson's is leading it because I haven't previewed the, the tape here. McDowell was in 26th. I can see he was in the 95 last year on the lead lap uh, in this race. Uh, so, so I know kind of where we were. But we only go to New Hampshire once. We used to go there twice a year. 
So we only go there one time this year, and this is it this weekend. We'll just watch these last couple of laps and then talk about that. He's going to enter the corner lower than he really wants to. That's going to hurt his lap time. Kyle Larson closing the gap, 1.7 seconds. We're looking forward to a great finish here. And a reminder, one hour of coverage, one hour of coverage following this race right on NBCSN. I'm going to stop it there just so you can look a little bit. If you looked at Daytona, how much of the banking was, and when I say banking, you know, these tracks are 6 to 8 degrees to 11 degrees like that, and then if my hand goes up, Daytona's uh, 30 degrees, 28, 30, 32 degrees, somewhere in there. So there's a lot more banking, so these are flat tracks, so these cars won't go near as fast in the corner as they go at, at Daytona, and, uh, and they rely on in the bottom, and there's an apron down here, this gray area, that if your car is tight, they'll actually put the left sides on to get it to turn just a little bit more. So we'll watch this out and then we'll talk just a little bit more. Plenty of interviews from the drivers. And now as the top two have got into lap traffic, that is definitely going to come into play. Can Kyle Larson catch them? And Rick, think about the up, or think about the overcome what excuse me think about what these two have had to overcome the 11 in a backup car the 42 started at the rear of the field so adversity for both the first and second place car Kelly there's actually 12 laps to go here Joe Gibbs racing driver to win this season his crew chief saying it's not just the team that's improved Denny's been improving in what he's been doing inside the cockpit of the car his driving style he's there's actually 12 laps to go there so uh, Dean and I kind of put this all together ourselves and and he kind of texts me the day of and says what would you like video of and then he pulls it and between us we try to he, he videos and I try to run the laptop and we appreciate your patience and, and I enjoy doing this you know if, if you ever have any questions that, that, that we could answer try to be on a week-to-week -week basis I know I miss a couple weeks sometimes things change but um, but I really enjoy what I do and to be able to do this with Blue Ridge now and, and Dean Hensley here here in Hendersonville, North Carolina is always fun. Um, tonight, like I said, if you're not doing anything, the truck race on dirt. So there at Eldora, Tony Stewart owns that with another guy up there. Uh, Roger, I think is his name. I don't know his last name. And, and the trucks uh, actually race on dirt tonight. That's kind of where NASCAR got their start back in the 40s and the 50s. And it's a, quite a show, you know, it, it, it allows people that normally, again, like Daytona Talladega road courses, allows people uh, a different opportunity that don't get a chance to win. So watch that tonight. We go to New Hampshire this week. Hopefully we'll be back on next Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Again, appreciate everybody and, and hope you enjoy your NASCAR. Thank you very much.